What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and we are now welding up the trusses on the Dana 60 front and the GM 14 bolt full floating axle for the rear for my Jeep JK. The front and the rear full truss kits from Barnes four wheel drive. They sent every single bracket in one box and then the two trusses in two separate boxes. So now the fun part of going through and figuring out which brackets go on which side, front and rear. As you can see in the box here, we have all these different brackets and they all have numbers and stuff on there that they've written on. So is going through and setting out which brackets go specifically where, get the trusses laid out and get it all ready for tomorrow. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure it out from bracket hole to bracket hole. That way I know how wide it is from side to side and then find wherever that center point is. So I'm gonna measure out there. Yeah, 50, 58 and a half inches from outside of bracket oh, to outside of bracket. So using some basic math skills here, 58 divided by two, 29 plus an extra half. So it would be 29 and a quarter inches from side to side. So that means I do 29 and a quarter. It's gonna set it just on the outside of this first fin. Let's measure out the other side and it is exactly the same. Now for the truss, I'm gonna do the same thing. However, I'm gonna use these brackets. And I can measure from side to side here and have something to base it off of because unfortunately, pumpkin's in the way, I can't just measure from side to side there. Looks like we got 52, so again, math 26. Dang, you know what, that's dead on accurate. Okay, well, I guess I don't really need to move anything. The biggest important thing is setting the pinion angle prior to welding the truss on. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but when you do a lift on any solid axle, as you start lifting it up and then you start rotate the pinion a little bit, you're gonna start having a bow in your springs. Well, we're gonna eliminate that by presetting the, uh, the pinion angle. So what you're gonna wanna do is find the angle of your pinion currently on the Jeep on flat ground. You can do it with the analog one or you can do it with a digital one. This one here I got on Amazon, it was like 15 bucks. I will link this one in the description below for you guys so you can go buy one of these. I'm gonna be angling on the new axle up by five degrees. Theoretically, that should be all perfect. I've done the math, I've checked multiple times, and that is correct. So just like the axle tubes, I'm gonna spray on the bottom of the trusses. I'm gonna do the, uh, the weld through primer. Once this is welded on, you can't spray paint up in there. I don't want these things to rust up here in the Pacific Northwest, so spray these down, some weld through primer, get them prepped, and we're gonna start welding them onto the axle. Okay, so now that everything is all lined up, everything is ground down, everything is prepped, we are ready to tack weld. He's the pro, I'm gonna watch. And there goes my light. Like I said earlier, we have the pinion marked up at five degrees, and then the truss on top is completely level. We're gonna do it this way so we can tack it in. Afterwards, we can actually rotate the axle up and down to get the better angles to weld everything on how we want to. As you know, you don't want to weld it all in one spot at one time because it'll start warping. You don't want to trust the tacks too much so it doesn't pull and warp and everything. So we're going to rotate this up at a 90 degree and start uh, doing the final weld on the truss coming across here. On the lower control arm uh, mounting tabs, you can actually do a higher clearance and a lower clearance one. If you have a higher clearance one, you have to have two inch shorter shocks so you don't bottom out the shocks. I already have the shorter shocks. I'm gonna be measuring up two inches on here as you can see. And then just cut through and cut off that bottom part. So when it's in with the track bar, I have the track bar end right here. So what I'm gonna do is hold this in place while it's all tacked together and welded. So that way this part doesn't narrow and warp in as it's welding. So it stays the correct uh, distance away right there. It makes it a little bit easier and uh, make sure this is nice and straight. Worst thing to do is make this too narrow and you can't get the track bar in easily later. Then you have to ground stuff down and that just sucks. Now the fun part is the front truss. It comes in, well, comes in four pieces. You got one long piece, the top piece, and then two for the back. First things first, we're gonna measure this out. And per instructions, you want the, uh, the pinion pointed up at a seven degree and the truss being flat. Or you could do it where the 
truss is pointed up at a seven degree and the pinion is flat. I'm gonna do one final check real quick. So we are at zero degree there, 7.1 degree there. So the perfect right there. So as you can see up underneath here, it is bare metal. I do not want this to rust. So I'm gonna throw some more uh, weld through primer on here, up underneath, before we put the other plate back on here and weld the, uh, the back half of it. Well, it takes five minutes for this stuff to cure. So uh, yeah, hang out for a minute and then we'll continue on. And just like the rear axle, we're going to work away and do uh, sections at a time so we don't overheat the axle, uh, just like the rear one. This side is not as important just because you have like that much of axle hanging out, it can't really warp as much. But this side is a lot longer and this one's more important to kind of go back and forth and do different areas at a time. Now the truss is all welded, less the center part. We're not going to do the cast part until the very, very end. It is time to assemble all the pieces up top. These pieces do key in pretty well together. These top ones are a little bit uh, more flimsy, so we're gonna probably start on those first. Uh, you'll see these uh, control arm brackets, they, uh, they sit kind of weird. What do you think? Let's do it. <laughs> As we're putting this together, you see how I put the piece together, sat it down inside the toggles here. It's gonna be way too impossible to weld on the inside, so as long as we weld around the pluses or whatever the bracing on there, that should be good enough for it. Once that's all done, weld around the outside of this tube that uh, the control arm bolt is gonna be going through. So my buddy Brandon had to uh, head out for the night. Looks like the rest of it is up to me. I practiced with him and uh, worked on a lot of it, so I think I'm pretty proficient now at knowing what to do and how to weld it, so about to find out. Now I got all the brackets, everything is welded onto the truss, except one little spot on the driver's side shock mount. That one needs to be welded to the cast and the cast needs to be heated up. The cast is a lot more resilient to the welds. So the cast needs to be heated up to 350 to 400 degrees, which means you need to get some map gas. You can do it with propane, but uh, the map gas tends to burn at a higher temperature, so it heats up a little more faster and it's a little more efficient. So the best thing to do is just start heating up and do sections because once you heat it up, you wanna cool it down very, very gradually. So I'll show you that after we do the welding. However, I'm gonna heat it up right now and show you kind of what we gotta do. So what you wanna do is you wanna bring up both the cast and the steel up to the same temperature. That's at 350 to 400 degrees. Right now it is sitting at 54 degrees. So it's got some temperature to come up about 300 degrees. So this infrared thermometer here, uh, it is one of the easiest things to take the temperature. I'll link this in the description below as long, along with some uh, map gas here. So you can do the same thing and heat it up and take the temperature. So what you want to do is you want to heat it up nice and gradual. Don't stay too long on one spot. Now that everything is welded completely to the cast, now is the time we go back and forth checking the temperature over and over again, making sure that the mild steel doesn't cool down faster than the cast steel, and make sure it doesn't cool down too quickly. It is currently 35 degrees outside, and it is probably just barely above that in the garage because the door is open. 
to make sure that none of the fumes go inside. So I'm going to make sure that everything stays the same temperature. And once everything gets to between 150 and 200 degrees, I'm going to take this blanket right here and I'm going to wrap this whole thing up for the night. So everything kind of is insulated and cools down together and nothing cracks or pops or anything like that and starts breaking the welds or even worse, the casting. Got the front done. It is wrapped up and tucked in for the night. So now I'm just gonna let this cool overnight and in the morning it should be prepped and all good to go. All nice and cooled down together. So now it is time to tackle the rear. I'm gonna do the exact same process. So I'll just time lapse it. Let's add some music. There we have it. Both axles are officially fully welded. All the trusses, all the brackets, everything is welded. And now they are wrapped up for the night. These have been sitting here for about 24 hours now, uh, cooling down, it heated up throughout the day, then cooling down just because the temperature outside. So it is time to inspect it and make sure that nothing cracked. So far, so good. Looks good. I don't see any cracks inside of the welds or anything up in here. I'm going to go through all the uh, casting area and look for any cracks anywhere in the welds or in the, uh, in the casting or the steel. So all the welds held? That is awesome. The heat application and the post-cure or post-heat cool down Everything worked out really, really well with it. Now, I guess it's just time for setting it up and painting the entire assembly, both the uh, front and the rear. After that, I think we're just about done with the actual build of the axles, and it's on to gearing. And there we have it. The axles are all painted, less than the bottom, because obviously the jack stands are holding them up, so those will be painted when I'm on the Jeep. However, for now, they are looking absolutely beautiful. The axle assemblies are done, bless the gears. If you like the video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna see you guys next time.